Hello EFD, happy weekend to all of you. Welcome back to Transfer Review, the show where we put silly season under the microscope. Um, this week I'm joined by Mikey McCubbin. Mikey, how are you doing? Yeah, not too bad, Henry, not too bad. It's a nice sunny Friday as we're it shooting is. this. Um, so yeah, spirits are high. Um, I'm testing negative at the moment, so that's <laughs> that's always that's always good. Um, yeah, I'm all good. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. I went to see the uh, Bob Marley musical last mm. night in London, which was real was fun, it? actually. Yeah, it was class. Everyone was on their feet at the end, having a good old, good old what, sing song to what get song, up, stand What up. songs did they, was it Get Up, Stand Up? Yeah, so that's a good song to end on, actually. That's a really good song to end on. Yeah, it like weaves, it's classic musical genre. They weave his life through all the songs, so uh, it's quite fun. But I've seen, I've seen that this week, and Titan, which if anyone's watched it at home, it's that weird French film that has come out about a woman okay. who falls in love with a car. I've had a bit of a weird cultural week, actually, come to think of it. Oh, nice, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I like the I like the sound of that. I watched Boiling yeah. Point earlier in the week with Stephen Ooh. Graham, which is um, an intense watch. Um, yeah, very intense watch, but uh, but very good. And I also watched Mad Max on the weekend as well for the first time, which is great. Um, oh, it's so good, it is so good. Yeah. Anyway, get your, uh, get your cinema recommendations in the comments down below. We'll crack on with the show. Just some interesting transfers worth just reviewing for the week. Obviously, we've seen Luca Dean and Chris Wood move for big money, actually, for the pair of them. But Shakhtar Donetsk, they've signed David Neres from uh, Ajax for 12 million euros. Great uh, Sergio Oliveira has moved uh, from Porto to Roma. Bo- Borja Mayoral, he's left Roma. He's gone to Getafe on loan. And then Bakambu, he's joined Marseille on a free transfer. Um, any of those you like at all, McCubbin? Um, I think 12 million euros for David Neres is a snip. Um, yeah, I'm amazed. Um, I mean, I don't know much about the deal, but um, but yeah, I'm, I'm amazed. No one was able to to kind of lure him away aside from Shakhtar. So um, so yeah, really good deal for Shakhtar. That 12 million. Obviously, he's had his injury issues over the years, but he is a yeah, he's a tremendous player in this day. Completely agree with you there. I just spare a thought quickly for Bodo Glimt, our favourite mm. Norwegian team. They've just lost Marius Loder to Schalke. He's the fifth player who's left them this January already. They're getting absolutely raided. I think Chris Hamill and Celtic will be licking their lips ahead of that what conference league tie. Anyway, we're going to look at the transfer we like this week, uh, McCubbin, which mm. is Andreas Christensen to Borussia Dortmund. Yeah, really like the idea of this move. Um, yeah, according to various reports in Germany, Borussia Dortmund are intensively pursuing uh, the signing of Chelsea's Danish centre-half Andreas Christensen. Uh, the 25-year-old, of course, has been stalling on that new contract at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea have, of course, hit to have hit a number of problems with trying to tie down centre-backs to new deals. Um, <laughs> Antonio Rodiger, the most discussed, but Christensen... Um, you know, in some people's eyes, is a more important case in terms of how much younger he is than Rodiger, um, the potential that he has to really blossom into a top, top centre half. Um, and so, yeah, with his deal expiring in, in six months, you know, a number of clubs are, you know, monitoring him uh, for a pre contract agreement. Um, Chelsea are understandably still trying to tie him down long term. Tuchel recently called him the perfect fit for the Blues. Um, but yeah, there's apparently a, a disagreement over wages. He's currently on around 80k, according to reports, which makes him one of the uh, least uh, or worst paid players in the squad. Still a very hefty wage, of course. <laughs> yeah. But um, you know, reports back in kind of September, October were saying that the Blues were offering him around 140k. There's also been talk that perhaps he doesn't want that long term a deal. The Chelsea are kind of want him to sign a five year deal. He's looking for more of a three. Kind of yeah, the kind of three-year ballpark. Um, so yeah, uh, there are a number of factors at play here, um, and clearly yeah, Chelsea are not in the position where they'd want to be with him. Um, Build claim that he is Dortmund's top priority uh, as they hunt for defensive reinforcements. Of course, Dortmund, as we've discussed, that we discussed on um, uh, Continental Club briefly yesterday have not been in the best of luck with, with injuries in their back line over the last two years have they no. um, this season has been no different um, Dan Axel Zagadou is currently out with coronavirus he'll be a free agent in the summer Marin Pogracic uh, may well may stay or go depending on whether Dortmund activate the option to buy on his loan deal from Wolfsburg uh, but I don't know if he's necessarily done enough to, to prove himself mm. as a regular starter in that side when everyone's fit He's only made nine league appearances this term as it is. Um, Axel Witzel also set to leave um, two in the summer. 
um, which would free up a reported £6.7 million pounds worth in uh, on the BVB wage bill to move for Christensen. So, it, you know, the funds are certainly there. Um, you know, they could even potentially offer more than what Chelsea are offering. And But, I mean, you know, more, more importantly, what they can offer is um, a starting place um, in that back line, which, yeah. you know, hasn't been easily forthcoming for Christensen at Stamford Bridge. Um, but Henry, yeah, what would you, what do you make of this deal? Would you like to see this happen? I love it. I think this would be perfect for the club um, and the, and the player. Really, I, I I think Christensen. I was reading the Times report on this today. They were they're kind of shocked that Chelsea have got to this point uh, with him. He's you know fully fledged international for a very good Denmark side. It must be said, mm. um, one of one of the top teams in Europe at the moment. Uh, it's just weird to see that he hasn't always been a nailed down starter. At Chelsea, as you say, but I mean, this term he's played a thousand minutes in the Premier League. That's eleven starts, and he's also played. He started five of their Champions League fixtures too. So clearly, he is trusted in some of the bigger games. Um, and he's, I think, he's a very competent ball player, isn't he? he ranks among the top ten percent of passes attempted and completed amongst sort of top level centre halves, and he averages around four point six progressive per carries per ninety two. So he's capable of bringing the ball out uh, with his feet as well. Obviously, playing in a very strong back line um, under Thomas Tuchel isn't he learning from the very best in Thiago Silva and sort of Rudiger so, so and, and, uh, you can see that he's getting better and better I think every year too I mean he's I guess one of the criticisms is that he wasn't always physically imposing enough uh, perhaps a bit weak at times and you know only only completing around 0.5 tackles per game this season but the rest of his stats are genuinely excellent he's a lot stronger than people give him credit for as far as, as, far as I'm concerned He's currently averaging a massive six clearances and three aerial dual wins per 90. While his positional understanding, I think this the, this stat is is, is, is massive. 3.8 interceptions per game at the time of writing. So as as I've said, he he's such yeah. When he's in that Chelsea back line, they appear to be a better side. All the stats say they they concede fewer. They're gaining more points. He, he he looks like a really competent player, and he's been there a long time now, hasn't he? Mm. Um, at Chelsea I think he joined back in about 2014 and he can play in the back two or back three he has history in Germany too this is another reason why so I think BVB would be foolish not to sort of, um, go after the word and really pursue him he, he was excellent for Borussia Gladbach on loan between 2015 and 2017 so yeah I, I, I think if he wants game time he looks like a guy that's comfortable and happy to move if needs be if he wanted to stay at Chelsea I think he'd have extended by now um, uh, clearly he has options on the table it says Barcelona are interested in him as well I think once again that would be a wise deal I mean yesterday we talked a little bit about whether or not Botman would be a good um, move for Dortmund McCubbin but mm. I mean all things considered surely Christensen is about as good as it gets for a centre half on a pre-contract agreement at the kind of calibre they're looking for yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, it's, it's funny. It's not. It's not a rumor that I've seen an awful lot of recently. But yeah, you know, seeing seeing those reports this week, it makes a lot of sense. Um, need to remember as well, he was excellent in the centre of a back three um, during Antonio Conte's mm. first, no, second season at Chelsea. I think he was he had a real standout um, season there, and then kind of lost his place under Sarri. Um, so this is a guy who you know at twenty five, which is still. You know, on the younger side, um, for for kind of senior centre halves, has quite a lot of experience, and like you say, was was excellent at <clears throat> Borussia Mönchengladbach as well. So, yeah, I mean, this is a guy who's been kind of threatening to to kind of explode and really assert himself as one of the top defenders in Europe for a number of years now. Um, and he just needs that chance. He needs that manager to to really put faith in him and make him a kind of central player. Um, in their team and I think yeah, if Marco Rosa can do that at Dortmund um, then this could be a really really um, you know really important deal um, for the club because uh, they, they need to sort out that defence um, and I think yeah I think in some ways the sooner the better for Chelsea as well to know what his future is because then they can start planning for the summer because if he is to leave if Rodrigo is to leave as well um, then they obviously need to do some serious, serious planning if they want to challenge for the title again next season. Absolutely. All right, Chelsea fans at home, would you be gutted if Christensen really was on the mood and on the move? Sorry, and BVB fans, how exciting is this? I think this a transfer that really makes sense. And how often do we say that on this show? All right, that was a transfer we like. Let's move on to the one that we don't like. 
The transfer we don't like this week comes in light of some comments made by a certain agent this week, Henry. <laughs> it's Usman Dembele. Um, yeah, what's going on here? Yeah, it really looks like the Usman Dembele contract saga at Barcelona is reaching sort of an unmovable impasse. I don't know if that's even the correct terminology for it, but it just looks like it's going nowhere at all. I think the talks have grinded to a halt once more. I mean, we thought that the winger had settled and staying in Catalonia. They said that he basically instructed the agent to make that happen. But now fresh reports over obscene contract demands have thrown that into doubt again. Bear in mind, once another player of only six months left on his deal can sign a pre-contract agreement um, with foreign clubs outside of Spain, I, th- I think, as, as of now. you know, And there will be plenty of interest in him from Germany to the Premier League. And it looks like the Premier League might be where he's heading I mean, according to Sky Sports journalist Alvaro Montero, he's now demanding £25 million a year to extend with Barcelona, which they are flatly refusing to do. <laughs> that works out. I've worked, I did some maths. That's a gross salary of 480 k per week. That's madness. Which is just nuts. I think he's already on about 210 k per week. So he, he, I don't think Barcelona want to give him any raise on that. I mean, this is really frustrating. The Blaugrana, we saw their director of football... Matteo Alemani, he told Sport this week, it's time for Dembele to decide what he wants to do. This is the quote, he knows very well what the club thinks. He has our offer on the table and he knows we should resolve this situation quickly. So I think it's now or never for this deal to get done. They can't sort of keep waiting and playing games, certainly with the player or his agents. Um, and yeah, I mean, the, the agent Musa Sissoko, who's apparently asking for about a £12 million commission, uh, for any deal he he sort of hit out once again at the club telling Lekeep that the reason that the contract hasn't been extended so far isn't because of sort of silly wage demands this is despite him previously saying he wanted a Ballon d'Or level wage for his client he said actually mm. the problem is Xavi now and Xavi's management um, he pointed to a recent Copa del Rey win over Leonardo's Deportivo which Dembele came on at half time and actually performed very well but he said it was difficult to understand why the 24 year old featured at all as he hadn't been training after contracting COVID and he's, you know, he said day to day management of the club was a real issue and nothing would be changed unless uh, you know that's resolved so I don't think Barcelona are going to appreciate these kind of comments at all and I'm beginning to think who, who would want to touch him and pay the kind of money that uh, he's asking for McCubbin because he, you know he he clearly comes with a bit of baggage and sort of physical issues as well for all of his talent and I for me he's just it's just a really tricky one I'm not sure who should go for him what do you think yeah I mean those wage demands are mad aren't they I, I don't think anyone pays that um, I think you're right and, and certainly not Barcelona I think that's that I mean if, if it is true that he's demanding those wages then surely it is just a play to kind of almost just kind of strong arm them to be like well you know we'll, we've got no choice we'll have to let you go for free in the summer um, because Barcelona are never paying that in their current situation obviously they had to get Coutinho off the books to, to um, get Ferran Torres registered um, <laughs> so yeah I mean particularly wages is where Barcelona can't really uh, go overboard considering La Liga regulations um, so yeah that does seem it does seem odd that he'd sincerely ask for that much. Um, as for the, you know, his agent's comments again, that seems like something that that's almost you know, set to, um, <clears throat> you know, break the relationship between them and the club. I'm, I find it difficult to see how how that's going to help the situation equally. Like Xavi did say, you know, one of the first things he said was that he was very keen to get Osman Dembele signed mm. up to a new deal when he came in through the door. So shame from a Barcelona point of view, but equally. Maybe it is just time um, for, for these two parties to, to you know, go separate ways um, because, you know, Dembele's career at Barcelona has been a really sad one, hasn't it? Really, there's been yeah. flashes of brilliance and, and, you know, there's been points where maybe we thought he'd turn a corner, um, but it just hasn't happened, um, which is a real shame because he came, you know, he obviously came to Barcelona with a lot of promise, um, looked like mm-hmm. uh, easily one of the best young uh, attackers in Europe. But yeah, like you say, Henry, Premier League, um, El Chiringuito, um, you know, ever trustworthy, have claimed that the French international signed a pre-contract agreement with Chelsea. Um, although no one else is reporting that. Surprise, surprise. Um, Spanish radio station, Cadena Ser, uh, stated that he has a, his heart set on a move to Man United with a swap deal involving Anthony Martial even being considered. Um, find that hard to believe considering, or at least I hard, find that hard to see how that would work considering yeah. how United really can't get the best out of their current wingers um adding you know a a player who struggled to find 
form um, into that mix uh, just doesn't seem like a good idea. Liverpool are also said to be interested. Obviously, obviously you talked about them being linked with FC Porto's Luis Diaz last um, year. Also being linked with Jared Bowen, who's on far at the moment for West Ham. Um, so feel like that is probably unlikely. And they've also, you know, been strongly linked with him in the past and nothing's happened. So, um, yeah, not sure if he's the kind of player that, that Jurgen Klopp would want to bring into the setup. Um, but like you were saying, Henry, yeah, like the, the injury thing is a massive thing. Um, you know, if you're signing a player up to a long term contract on big wages, then, you know, the 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 prospect of losing them for half a season every year um, is not very enticing, is it? Um, you know, according to Transfer Mark, he's missed 102 matches for the Blaugrana since signing in August 2017. Um, this season, um, he's only registered two assists in 520 minutes. His underlying numbers are not bad by any means. He's averaging nearly five shots and key passes per combined per 90 minutes. Um, he's also averaging over two dribbles a game. Um, he even played, actually, the, the full 120 minutes in the Supercopa yeah. defeat against Real Madrid midweek. Um, and he did look pretty dangerous at points. At other points, he didn't look so good. His touch was a bit off. He could have scored, but... Um, yeah, his touch failed him. I think that was in the first half. So, I don't know, signs of a player who, you know, isn't totally confident, you know, isn't necessarily match fit. And yeah, like has, you know, still has a lot to do to live up to his potential. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I really struggle to see, you know, a club that where, where he really fits unless he wants to take a bit of a step down and a step down in wages, etc. And and kind of build himself back up in, say, Liga and all the Bundesliga. Um, I don't know if you have any thoughts on this, Henry. Honestly, I don't really know. It's, I, I've been thinking about this quite a lot. I don't think that he should go to Chelsea. I don't think that he should go to Manchester United. I think they have should maybe give a chance to people like Rashford and Sancho, etc. I mean, in all honesty, I think he should stay with Barcelona. I think he should maybe adhere to what they're asking. He's going to be played well. Um, paid well, sorry, and I think if he can just show quality and consistency over an extended period of time, then he can start to demand some of these wages once more. I mean, there's a lot of money has been spent on him in such a short time, um, so I think he really needs to start showing what he can do. But it's a really, really tricky one uh, to deal with. But I mean, everyone at home, where do you think Usman Dembele should head next? Let us know in the comments down below once more Mikey thank you very much for joining me uh, on this like you said lovely weekend morning yeah, what do you think our viewers should go to now to uh, kick off their Saturday well considering the things that we've talked about today we've got an explained out from last week uh, I think it was on I can't remember what it was on, oh, it was on FD um, about why so many big players are running down their contracts obviously we've mm. talked about Christensen and Dembele today but there are plenty more obviously Mbappe um, Rodiger, etc., etc. Um, so yeah, go and check that out. That's a great explained. And on the subject of uh, 100 million pound plus players, I use Van Den Bele, um, We had an explained come out on FD as well um, on on Thursday um, about yeah uh, 100 million pound players and why um, they have so far been completely bad news, haven't they? Um, I believe was that a script of yours? That Henry? was one of mine. One of mine. Yes. Lovely no. stuff as usual. Um, so yeah, go and show that video some love as well. Yeah, Barcelona featured very heavily in that video. All right, McCubbin and I are off to watch Dorking versus Hampton in a big non-league fixture. So have a great weekend wherever you are and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.